Hello everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us at today's Gas Industry Awards um, and the organised by iGEM in the EUA. My name is Ben Clark, I'm the President-elect for iGEM and the Technical Director at WSP. Today's webinar will focus on the Customer Service Award category. Please note that the presentations you're going to see today are in no particular order and the winner will be announced at next week's uh, Gas Industry Awards to be held on the 18th of May. I would like to start, however, by saying a few quick words on housekeeping. So as we're on Teams today, could I ask everyone to ensure that they have their videos and their microphones switched off throughout the event? Um, our audience would prefer not to hear your neighbour's lawnmower or dog or insert other distraction of choice just now. And if you want to pose any questions for any of our speakers, then please use the chat function on Teams as we go. And I will look to pick up your questions at the end of each presentation and, and ask them on your behalf. Um, questions. Um, at also to please note that a recording has been taken of this session and will be made available afterwards. So uh, what are we here to look at? Well, the category today is the Customer Service Award and all of the organisations and individuals to be discussed have demonstrated excellent customer service. The judges were looking for individuals that go above and beyond in order to deliver excellent customer service and take every opportunity to promote the importance of good customer service to their colleagues. Organisations that place customers at the heart of everything that they do. Innovative ways to monitor customer satisfaction and motivate employees to provide a positive customer experience. Strategies and training designed to enhance customer satisfaction levels. Tools and techniques to deal with complaints and provide out of hour support. Or last but not least, emergency procedures and initiatives that safeguard vulnerable customers. Speaking entirely on a personal level, uh, in one of my past roles, I was responsible for one network, network who showed me nameless gas connections, GSOS uh, customer service, and hence I know how important and equally how rewarding it can be to deliver great customer service, and hence it gives me great pleasure to introduce the shortlisted candidates today. So first today, uh, we're going to hear from Darren Elsom, the Eastern Network Director at Cadent. Darren is an engineer with over three decades of operational experience across multiple functions within the gas industry. And today he's going to be telling us all about the Orange Angels from Cadent's Eastern Network. Darren, if I could invite you to turn on your camera, uh, present your slides and uh, take us away. Thanks very much, Darren. Cheers. Great. Thanks, Ben. Good afternoon, everyone. I will just tee up the slides. OK, so uh, someone on the admin side can shout if you can't see them, but uh, I think you can. So uh, I'm going to crack on. So, um, yeah, so as as Ben said, I look after the Eastern Network. So what that means is South Yorkshire, the East Midlands and the East of England. That's the, uh, the sort of the sub regions that we cover. Um, and, and Angels in Orange is um, is is the title. Um, and really where the, where this started was a, a really cold, dark night in um in October, I remember exactly where I was standing when uh, when this incident started. I was in our customer centre, and I'd, I was told that we'd had about 100, and, well, it was exactly 145 calls from um, customers saying that they'd got no gas or had got pressure problems. So I knew that an incident was starting, uh, and I know there will be people uh, uh, in this meeting that can relate to those types of phone calls. Um, the, the, the location of Worksworth, it's in a really rural part of Derbyshire, beautiful place actually. Not that I've been there before, but spent a lot of my, my time in there in October. Um, and in essence, what had happened is a, a water main had burst uh, that had, um, in essence, jet blasted its way into our, our, our PE network. And we had a lot of water, over 10,000 litres um, in about nine kilometres of, of main. Uh, and because it's a beautiful location um, in Derbyshire, it's also very hilly. So um, that brings about its own challenges in terms of extracting water. But what that actually meant, whilst that's the engineering side of it, what it actually meant is over 900 homes and businesses didn't have gas. And within that, there were 215 priority customers, you know, 215 people that were going into that Tuesday evening with, with no heating. Um, potentially no hot water and probably no cooking facilities either. So, you know, the clock was really against us. Now, when it comes to managing incidents, um, you know, from a gas distribution network point of view, uh, dealing with water ingress or, or pressure problems or, or no gas situations, it is something that we, we do. Um, we're all familiar with that. And for me, it was about why is this incident any different from any other one that we've managed over the years? And certainly at the outset, 
we were really determined to put the customer absolutely at the heart of this incident. And if you think about an incident, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. We all want to get the gas back on as safely and as quickly as we can. Um, but I've always felt like we could do more in terms of keeping customers more, more involved and more engaged and understanding of what's going on. Um, the, the nickname, the angels dressed in orange, um, or orange angels as it seemed to have got shortened to, um, actually came from some social media posts from you know customers in that community that just saw this, um, literally the, the town lit up orange over a few days, and, and that's obviously our orange jackets that we're wearing. Um, as you would expect on an incident, there are lots of people, lots of orange jackets and lots of vehicles everywhere. But what the town saw actually is a fantastic response, not just by the people that we sent, but also the way that we interacted with the local community as well. And that led to hundreds of social media posts, which was fantastic and, and you know, all positive posts about what we're doing. And perhaps the best measure of the fact that there were 900 homes that lost their gas supply, uh, some for several days, um, we didn't get a single complaint. Um, and that for me was the ultimate measure that um, not a single complaint having, you know, it, it, this wasn't the summer, it wasn't, it wasn't nice weather, it was cold, miserable, dark, um, and uh, some long days. Uh, but the local community really appreciated the efforts that we went to. So in terms of how we went about this, um, firstly, we what we decided to do um, is set up more of the interaction side on site rather than doing it off site. So it's quite normal for us now to have an area where our engineers will use as their, if you like, their operational base. So, you know, we need to do things from an engineering and operational point of view. But I always refer to it as, as front of house. In fact, I often refer to uh, restaurant analogies. You know, what's the front of house look like? We can be doing all the stuff in the kitchen and that needs to happen, but customers don't necessarily need to know too much about that. They do need to know what's going what's going on. So we set up our front of house in the, in the town hall, uh, which is a place that, that all the local community know. So for those customers that want to pop in and speak to someone, that's absolutely there and available. And that's quite normal in incident response. What we also did though is had our social media team sitting in the same town hall. So we had you know hundreds of messages um, in terms of direct messaging on Facebook. So people could find out what's happening to me in my street, when's my gas coming back on, when someone's going to visit me, what's happening. And um, so that really personalized message um, to that specific customer about what's happening and what's going on. Obviously speed of response is really important. We were responding in under 15 minutes. We kept the, um, the live chat going until around 11, 11.30 at night, and then we sort of shut it down for the evening and it was open again, 7, 7.30 the following day. So, you know, pretty much when people needed us to be there to let them know what was going on, we were, we were absolutely there. Um, so when we, when we looked at the stats, and this is very much after the incident, obviously, um, firstly, we found that um, a new video that we'd introduced, which was a what basically happens in a water ingress, so i.e. why can't we as a company just get the water out and turn everyone back on? So helping customers understand what we need to do to keep them safe. That was watched 725 times, um, which is great because people had an understanding of what we needed to do. Um, we made a point at the beginning of the incident of um, me recording a YouTube video that got 1400 views. And that was just around, you know, what's happened? Why are we in your town? What are we doing? And what help do we need from you? Um, and then at the end of the incident, we, we summed it up with a thank you video, which pleasingly got twice as many views as the initial one. Um, and that was really thanking the local community for their support as well. We set up a microsite within the Caden uh, website, and that was to make sure that when customers go on our, our website, they've got a space specifically for them where they can see what's going on on the internet. Likewise, a Darren, you've put yourself on mute. I, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. I didn't touch the keyboard. Someone <laughs> put <on> mute. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'll just go back a few seconds. So we set up a microsite. Um, so when someone went on the Cadent Facebook page, 
um, there was a specific site within that so people could see exactly what's going on in the incident, only one click away from our main page. We set up a dedicated Facebook page and we know from Google Analytics that we reached well over 26,000 people uh, in terms of the number of interactions that we were ha having online. Next one. So I mentioned the videos. So the water ingress one was really important, probably the most applicable one. But we had other other animations as well. So you know what to expect on the doorstep. Um, what does a priority service register mean, and what can you expect if you're a vulnerable customer? Um, what to do if you smell gas, um, and also carbon monoxide awareness as well. So again, it's just helping our customers understand the, the things that we need them to know when we're dealing with an incident like this. Just to give you a bit of a flavour of what, what it looked like on site, if you see top left, you can see the hilly nature of, of the, the terrain, which did cause us some challenges. Um, pleasingly, we used some good technology. Um, I mean, camera technology is, is fairly well trodden on, on these sorts of incidents. We also, for the first time, used a new top T siphon adapter, um, basically a top T with a dip pipe. And what it meant, though, is we could get the water out quickly, you know, less excavations and smaller excavations and, and extract water much more quickly. And bottom left there, you can see the incident room, which is at the, at the rear of the town hall, which is where you know, all the collaboration amongst all the operational teams and the customer teams and where we brought all of that together to make sure that our messaging between you know, what street we were going to and when and what should our customer team be telling our customers, making sure all of that was really joined up and connected. So perhaps some of the best ways other than the statistics is just seeing some of the, the really nice acts of kindness from the community from, you know, sticking a big poster up in the window, which was really nice when I saw that for the first time, to leaving a packet of biscuits <laughs> to uh, to a letter, you know, just setting, you know, this, this lady in uh, 86 years of age, just saying how much she appreciated what we did for her. And, you know, these are just a, a few examples there were there were lots more so um, to try and sort of summarize really when we started the incident there were 1600 properties that we needed to visit over 900 were impacted 215 vulnerable customers um, from an engineering point of view um, not that it matters it from a customer point of view but we needed to get over 10,000 liters of water out of the system that's what it turned out to be um, and a huge effort from our operational teams to, to make that happen. Um, but as I've said, the key difference on this incident is, is the engineering and the network stuff will always happen. It's what does the customer see? What do they hear? What do they know? And how are we interacting with them? Um, the last sort of things I'll say to wrap it up really is um, just after the incident, Firstly, um, I was contacted by the MP, uh, Sir Patrick McLaughlin, now Lord McLaughlin and a former Secretary of State. What was really pleasing is he contacted me because many of his constituents had been in touch with him to say what a great job we as a business had done. And norm, you know, normally when you get a letter from an MP, it's because there's a problem in, in a local area. It was really great to receive the accolades via their local MP as well, which was, which was fantastic. Um, the local community invited us to their annual carnival. Um, they wanted us to be part of that. Um, pan the pandemic meant that didn't take place, unfortunately, in the end. But uh, but the intent was there, and it was a lovely touch from the, the local community to sort of welcome us back um, after the event. And, and the last thing I'd say is that this is really about, again, putting the customer at the heart of it. After we'd finished, so we'd, you know, we'd reinstated the holes, the barriers have gone, et cetera. I sent a couple of people back to site um, and I said, look, I want you to walk the entirety of the town and let's make absolutely certain that Worksworth looks as beautiful as it did before we turned up, before our vans were on verges and on, on the side of the road and all the excavations that we had to have and the barriers and all the rest of it. You know, have we put this back as we would expect it if we lived in that community? And it's that mindset that was going for everyone through every interaction that we have that I think really, really made a difference on this particular incident and sort of really set customers absolutely at the heart of that operation. Um, and that's um, that's the uh, Orange and Angel, uh, uh, Angels in Orange, Worksworth incident. Back to you, Ben.
Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Darren. Um, well, uh, we've not had any questions posted uh, on the site. And just a reminder to everybody that if you do have any questions, oh, thank you, Omar, I'll ask your question second. But if anybody does have any questions, then please uh, don't hesitate to get them into the chat and, and we'll work our way through them. Could also just uh, a quick um, housekeeping reminder for everybody who's not presenting to turn off their cameras uh, and also their microphones. Um, Mr Jones, I, I might be referring to, to yourself there, uh, but, uh, but no names mentioned. So excellent. So we've had a, a question from Omar, so I'll, I'll ask this one to, to get us kicked off. Um, oh, sorry, just saying, is there any sort of technical report you can share with us about this incident? It's an impressive piece of work. So is there a, any sort of online report or any other sort of um, material available for people to find out more? Um, good question. There's, there's not a technical report as such. Um, I mean, from a customer point of view, and, and even myself, refreshing myself ahead of this session, actually, there's there's lots of uh, content online. Um, certainly, if you, if you simply type in Cadent Worksworth, you'll see a lot of what I was talking about, actually. So, you know, there's still links to our to our website. Um, there's links to the, the YouTube videos that I did, etc. So, actually, that's the thing in the digital age, isn't it? The content lives on uh, and it's so still it there. So I would urge you to, yeah, just put Cadent Worksworth in, in your browser and uh, you'll see it because it's all there. Brilliant. Well, I've uh, I've got a question from uh, from my own point of view. You, you highlighted uh, how this uh, incident changed a couple of things with the the, the combination of the uh, of the te technical and the online, uh, you know, and the physical. And it obviously comes across as being an incredibly positive experience. But we always feel that we can learn and do something differently going forward. So, from your point of view, I'm just interested. Was there any any lessons learned from the point of view of as positive as it was? Is there anything that you can take forward and think, oh, we could maybe do something slightly different on that? Or was there any sort of lessons learned? that kind of came away because sometimes that can be positive as well as negative yeah absolutely i mean we uh, as you would expect we did a post incident lessons learned i mean there were it, it was it was a nice post incident review because there was lots of positive to take from it um i think the the initial collaboration with the local authority was um was a bit challenging to start with um once we found our way with that 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 improved so i guess the point i'm making there is the collaboration between different agencies. Um, so if you take the local authority and the need for us to, let me give an example. We can look on the priority services register and see who has registered themselves on the PSR. That doesn't mean that you've captured every vulnerable customer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, So we rely heavily then on the local authority um, to see what information do they have, maybe on medical records, et cetera. So, the big thing for me is about how we engage as early as possible with the local authority. And even though we started that the night before, and I personally remember making the phone call, it, that still takes some time to get going. Um, it is so important, particularly when it's you know going into the winter period, it's cold, it's dark. You, you need to know who your vulnerable customers are. So that would be that would be the area for me that we could we could try even harder next time. Excellent, thank you. I've had one more question in from uh, Mark Owen. Um, interesting question actually says, uh, can you see more things like this happening when we start going over to the hydrogen aspect? <laughs> there's, a, that, oh, there's, have that hand grenade. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, I, I hey, what, while we're transmitting, uh, transporting a, a gas, there's, there's always a risk of, you know, either damage to an asset or, or some form of interference. Um, I, I struggle to see a world where that's not a possibility when we have, you know, multiple utilities in the ground. So, so could that happen in the future? Yes, I, I suspect so. Um, what I will say, and, and I don't think this is just a cadent thing, I think it's a gas industry thing as well. I think that we, um, as an industry, are a lot more focused now on the impact our network operations have on our customers. And, and there's a big difference for me, for me between the engineering and the network side of it, which is very important, but if you don't allocate enough resources to focus on the customer bit, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter how great you're, you're doing on the network, you know, the customer only sees what you tell them. So again, a learning point for me from previous incidents that we put into play here was, you know, you need to put enough people uh, on the customer facing part of the incident. And that was a lesson learned from before that we really, really deployed very well on this particular incident. 
Right. Well, thank you very much, Darren. I'm, I'm going to wrap up that uh, presentation there, but thank you very much for, for both the presentation and uh, and answering the uh, the questions that we had. Um, what I'd like thank to you. do now, um, if it's OK, is I'd like to invite Michael Lapper um, to, to to come to come on next. Um, Michael is the Head of Customer Experience for Cadence West Midlands Network. Uh, Michael has close to a decade of gas distribution industry experience across multiple roles, and today he's going to be talking to us about delivering transformative complaint handling improvements. Uh, Michael, if you'd like to uh, share your slides and take us away, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, hopefully those screen, um, slides have just come up on the screen for you. Um, <clears throat> so. Thanks um, for the opportunity really to talk you through our customer award nomination here at Caden um, in West Midlands Network. So we're uh, we're immensely proud really of the journey that we've been on with our recovery um, customer performance. Um, I originally submitted our team award uh, it was over 12 months ago and it was off the back of a really impressive uh, performance story turnaround. It was, a, it was a story where we you know we'd gone from last to second so, so it's kind of been unfortunate in a way that we've had this delay for 12 months to come back and I'm in a quite a quite good position now that we can we can finish that story and we can tell you that as at the latest kind of quarterly data share position um, at the at coming towards the end of year eight uh, you know the last year of, of Rio across all of the DNs we've kind of made that step up and got to that first so so now it's this epic tale of uh, last to first a rise up from the bottom of the performance table over the last two to three years and for any football fans out there I'm not saying it's as epic as the Leicester City turnaround and winning the league in 2015-16 but it's up there um, so I'm just going to move on a uh, on to my first slide so the starting position let's say it was going back around year six 2018-19 we were firmly last place for our customer scorecard um, performance and in simple terms really it's a regulatory measure it's about the network's ability to respond to and to resolve customer complaints in a timely manner and we were really bad at it so at the time our average uh, timeliness to resolve complaints was over eight days and for me that's an unacceptable delay to, to rectify something that in most of those occasions we've already got something wrong the first time around and then we're dragging our feet and taking so long to rectify it and it's not restoring confidence with the customer so there was an absolute lack of urgency um, it wasn't a priority for us and there was no accountability in the network for our network performance in you know, for responding to customers and complaints at the time were, were very much managed centrally and there was many many silos of, and of special Specialisms, for example, built over services or plan protection that complaints and inquiries would be aligned to, and it would just get passed over to a different individual, passed over to a different individual, and the customer just didn't know who they were speaking to and wouldn't get a you know a timely answer um, to their specific need. And often these departments sat just a few desks over from each other. Um, and, and though complaints are active, you know, we, we probably missed that there's a really clear impact on customer satisfaction, satisfaction scores, our other you know, really key regulatory measure uh, with, with the lagged survey process that we in, inherited. So we, we created a really clear ambition. Yes, we want zero complaints and we want to get things right the first time, but recognising we're, we're on a, you know, a longer journey with, that, with delivery teams. Um, so the focus here is very much around recovery. When it goes wrong, provide a genuine apology, explain our work, explain why we're there and just you know, make really clear what the next steps are to resolving that issue for a customer. But doing so is an absolute matter of urgency and restoring confidence from the customer's perspective. So, so I guess what have we done to kind of move that dial? Um, so our journey is kind of focused on behaviours and change of behaviours, and it's a cross-discipline team, so it includes every discipline across the cadent, you know, work types all in that customer team. Uh, but also, you know, really important point is this is across our supply chain as well. For us, that was Balfour Beatties, recognising that they're over half of our volume of complaints and needing to engage with that type side of the business as well to really change the uh, the overall scorecard performance. And the first and probably the most you know significant change that we've seen has been accountability. So we, we've uh, we've migrated our network complaints and inquiries activity and team from being this central Hinkley cadence central point into being a physical presence and a physical team in their depots. So I'm in Wolverhampton today and our other main depot in Birmingham, that's where the team sit and they interact. You know, it's very much a collective uh, with the operations rather than being a them and us. So this creation of a customer team that owns the network scorecard, regardless of, you know, what the complaint is and which specialism it is, it's a single point of accountability for strategy, for insights, for setting standards and performance and change. So we've got that customer team in the network now, working out of our main depots and working shoulder to shoulder with operations to resolve escalations just get that timely response back to a customer so the second um, kind of point is around 
getting performance uh, data right. So recognizing that say that our contract partner for mains replacement and reinstatement accounts for well over half of our you know, volume and noise with customers um, and needing to create, and we, we have created really good uh, standards and we've embedded those with our contract partners. And we've had, we have you know, daily calls with that contract partner and, and not only the contract partner, but ultimately the subcontractors that deliver that work to make them um, accountable and to, to feel the impact of uh, for not getting it right first time. So we, we started daily reports, so I'm going now for two or three years Years, uh, and every day we are on top of our performance and um, you know, drilling down into the detail. So the, uh, the the third point is around you know people. This is about people, not only the customers, but the uh, our team that engage with customers. And there were some really clear parallels from our from our safety performance, and we took some of that best practice from working with the safety team. So we had these safety stand down days. Um, but we we commenced um, and, and having regular network customer stand down days. So the really you know, the key point here is providing a platform for two-way feedback. So it's not just that as senior leaders or as um, customer um, advocates that we're going out to site and talking one way and telling them what we expect from customer. It's a two-way agenda. Um, and we started those, you know, network customer uh, stand-down days where we have a really clear agenda and two-way dialogue with with our operations team. So ultimately are our, our, our brand ambassadors that the customer interfaces with. And if we don't get that right, then customers won't feel that, that, that improvement. Um, so the, the fourth point, and, and no doubt for me personally, been the most intensive is just the, the visibility. So we've, we've had a daily senior leader jeopardy call every day same time 12 45 we have that complaint call where we rally around and bring every all of those um, operational managers or customer team leaders that need to be involved and it drives you know resolution and the, the main measure that we're getting to is whether we can resolve those complaints by the end of uh, day plus one which really does drive our scorecard what this has really enabled us to do over that period of time say so that call still happens today as it did two years ago as we started this journey it's really built up and enabled our local customer team to become multiple dis multi-disciplined and to reduce handoffs and reduce delays and just be able to provide that customer with that right answer uh, pretty much at the point in which they contacted us. Um, and and the, the final final one, which I've been really keen um, to kind of lead with the team, has been around reward and recognition. Um, you know, the team, the Paul, Reshma, uh, Alan, um, the, I don't want to exclude anyone, but the team have been on a journey um, and they felt personally accountable for our network performance over the last 24 months or so um, and if, as we've reached each milestone on our journey the team have you know we've made sure that we've given them the, those pats on the back and rewards so we've had uh, team dinners team meals uh, voucher awards we've had a ceo award um, which is great to get that pat on the back um, from, the, from the chief of our company but also now the kind of industry customer service uh, nominations though so it's been uh, it's been really good to kind of reward and recognize and bring the team along and the fact that our team's grown over the last 12 months but we still retained all of those original team members and retained that experience and expertise that have brought the you know we shared with the new joiners as they've um, as they joined us that's uh, a lot about the journey, but I, I am a numbers man and I do love a graph. So I'm going to show you a graph or two that kind of uh, hopefully visualise this journey that we've been on. So uh, hopefully you can see that screen in front of um, in front of you. That thick yellow line there is the West Midlands complaint performance from that regulatory scorecard performance. And as, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's driven by our effectiveness and timely response to, to close out any you know, negative customer um complaints or dissatisfaction and ideally we we will get that resolved and rectified and to the customer satisfaction by the end of a day plus one so this shows our improvement but i wanted to show it relative to you know to other networks and to other utilities who are also in that improvement space and you know rightly so um getting better at the way we respond to customers who have greater expectations so so this this thick yellow line you see is obviously in a, a upward trajectory and uh, it's relative so there to the other three cadent networks as an average score so our starting position was much lower and our, our very latest say uh, end of quarter three for this year is 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 higher but uh, you know just to compare it to caden isn't isn't the um the full story so it's a bit of a busy slide but and in, in the in the graph here the the blue line towards the top is the best gas network at complaint handling and you can see um they, they've been the best um, provider for the last three years or so we've not only caught them up from such a such a, a position that we were behind them but we've now got our nose in front and we're very much competing with the best of the gas industry um and but you know gas isn't the only measure that in benchmark we should be looking at and it's it's quite you know easy for us to compare ourselves to the best electricity network so the green line there is the best dno we've been really consistent very strong performer again we've not only caught them up but we are nudging ourselves to be what i think is the uh, the best place energy network in terms of the, the reactive complaint um response
So it's it's been a last of first for us, um, but I, you know, I'm sure we've got uh, further improvements uh, to go this year as we've started our new contracts, our new contract management organisation that we're onboarding. Um, but the, the other point I wanted to get across on, on the left-hand side of the screen, it's not just been an improvement to complaint handling, but at the same time, we've also been driving down, reducing our complaints. So we've had this parallel improvement running, um, driven by operations to try and um, try and get things right first time. So we've had you know, a 20, 21% reduction in complaints at the same time. Um, and in calling out our emergency response and repair area, which is one part of our scorecard, 96, 97% of those complaints now we get um, resolved in a satisfactory with the customer. So we um, we are really getting to a good area of performance. And this is just the opportunity, I think, to, for me to congratulate the team um, for their for their effort over the last over the last couple of years. Yes, we, we did originally submit it last year, but it's kind of fortunate in a way that we've been able to finish the story and come back this year and show our last to first, the Leicester City, if you like. So I wonder where our Champions League is next year. Okay, uh, so I mean that was it for material from me. I kind of open um, uh, pass back to Ben. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Michael. Um, the um, we've not had any questions in yet, although I think some are just about to come in. So I'll I'll, I'll ask one uh, myself to, to to start us off. Um, I mentioned at the start about my own uh, past history with regards to uh, to customer service, and uh, and one of the things I always remember finding at the time was the the challenge in finding the right data and getting the right consistency of data um, to to enable you to kind of measure where you're starting from. And I just wondered if you would be able to tell us a little bit about how you how you kind of maybe broke down the problem and try to analyze and get the right data to try and help you identify where you where you needed to to, to make improvements. Yeah, I think um, getting the right data and timely data is still probably the biggest challenge we have today. Um, and and so I, can, I can give you a you know, single answer to how we've managed to do that, but understanding the key themes has probably been a big drive behind this. So so we know what our key themes have been, and, and we know even today, even though we've improved our complaint handling performance, when we look at our customer satisfaction, uh, take connections, for example, I know right now what our, what our key theme is. It's about a single point of contact for a customer from the start to the end of their journey, that they just know who that they, they call that will answer the phone and be able to provide whatever you know that, that answer is. That remains our key theme today. So there are lots of things we still haven't addressed, um, but just the you know the complaint handling performance has really been around that timely response, so that customers aren't left waiting. And when they put a you know a question or a complaint into us, whether that's over the phone, via email, on social media, whatever their choice of um, method is of communication method is, that we're providing that timely response. And um, because it's often, as I say, it's often where we've already got something wrong, and we're having to backtrack and rectify, and um, just you know, providing confidence, I suppose, by giving that really timely response. So yeah, getting data, getting the right data is still. For me, probably the biggest challenge today. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. We've had another question in uh, from the floor, um, from Mark. Uh, so, uh, with all companies, there are so many different areas within the business which, uh, which you know, fit within the working area. What, sorry, which area would you say has given you the biggest challenge with regards to complaints? <laughs> Re uh, reinstatement, without a question, I think. Um, so that. Again, reinstatement is always uh, reactive, always off the back of having not done something that we either said we would or not set the right expectation to go and uh, to deliver to the you know, to what the customer is expecting from us. Um, and with the complaint handling, you know, the metric itself that we'll try and resolve that by if you complain uh, or express your dissatisfaction today, we'll have that rectified and resolved tomorrow. So that's just not not just a promise that we'll do something or a promise that we'll um, we'll rectify something, but actually having carried it out. So there's no doubt. And reinstatement crosses every process that we do, whether that's repair or connections or mains replacement. The ability to to get eyes onto that task, to get that specific task, you know, it would be a specialist surface, it'd be broken slabs or whatever it is, to to be able to identify exactly what replacements needed to get um, to get the reinstater out to rectify it and then to, to do a close out call with a customer and to do all that within day plus one is a real challenge so our you know our ability to um to respond to reinstatement complaints is um is is our biggest challenge but equally i think we've got an opportunity to, to do better in that space so if a customer today re, um, you know, reaches out to us calls us emails us whatever it is and says you know you've, you've broken three slabs during your reinstatement process or, or something you know, to like that effect we still send somebody out to look at that to then raise a reinstatement task and it's handoffs and it's time and so we, we are not still today when a customer lets us know we're not on the front foot what we should be doing and what we've got plans to do is almost to get um using innovation using text messages and video capability of, of phones to be able to just get eyes onto the task raise the task get them straight out rectify it and just have it done for a customer same day that's that's you know that's the ambition and i think we'll get there very soon 
Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Um, one last question then uh, before we move on. Um, and you, you've touched on this slightly in your, in your earlier answer, but uh, but we'll go anyway. So it's obviously an outstanding achievement uh, in terms of, you know, the, the level of improvement in terms of the, the complaint handling and uh, an excellent to achieve first place. But obviously it, this is not a race with a finish line. It's a, it's a continual sort of loop and experience. So what are you, what are your next focus in terms of trying to keep that, uh, to keep that level up there, you know, to, to kind of make sure that, that, that you retain that overall position but it's um it's, it's kind of a different dynamic now that we've kind of nudged ourselves to that top top one top two position and especially within the k you know the k4 networks and darren was on here for me so i know that darren's very close to his East performance um and when we were at the bottom and almost having some having people to overtake and different you know stages to reach it was it was really it was great to look up and see where we were um you know who we were going to aim for next and where we we're going to get to next now kind of getting to that front um position i'm already seeing the other cadent networks um sort of you know pushing themselves so we, i'm definitely feeling you know feeling the pressure and, um, and feeling that level of competition internally already so it, in, in a way i suppose that's great for customers because it shouldn't really matter where you live and the, ex the experience you get but it is certainly creating competition and, and a better performance just within cadent and i'm, and I'm sure the other gas networks are probably looking across and uh, wanting to, to push their boundaries as well so it is just this constant challenge there's not like there isn't you're right there isn't an end point to it um i, I guess we're going to continue competing and uh, being very competitive to, to to the better outcome to customers out there Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for for both the presentation and the, and the and the answers to those questions. Um, I'll I'll what I'll do is we'll move on now to to our next speaker, if that's okay. Um, so uh, I'd like to invite uh, Claire Edwards uh, to 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 join us now. Um, Claire is the customer service manager at Wales and the West Utilities. Claire's led the uh, Wales and the West customer service team, uh, delivering outstanding levels of service over many years. And today is going to talk to us about uh, the emergency service team. So Claire, uh, the floor is yours thank you thank you very much let me just see if i can get my presentation up it's thinking about it okie dokie are you able to see that yes we are thank you okay let me just get onto there Okay, so hopefully you should see that on the full screen now. Is that correct? Not yet. Still your still yeah, your okay. smaller slides. Okay. Still yeah, there's no change. It might be coming up somewhere. If you just expand the size of your screen, then we can go from. Is that any better? Yes, that's perfect. Why don't let's right. go for that? Thank you. Okay, okay. So um, yeah, so I am Claire Edwards. I'm the customer experience manager. Um, I have worked for Wales Mustity. Like um, it's been said that um, I've been there for 20 years, and the majority of that time has been in customer service. So um, I think it's fair to say that I've seen a lot of positive change over that time. Um, we've been in the top two gas, gas distribution networks over the last few years for overall satisfaction, um, but consistently first for our emergency and repair service um, for the, actually the last six years. So, you know, this is an achievement we're really proud of and we're really pleased to make this shortlist. You know, Pride is, um, you know, one of our company values and being recognised in this way really gives our emergency service team a great sense of pride and, and motivation to keep up the high standards and, and good work. So if I can move down to the next slide, I can show you um, that there were four reasons that Wales and West Util Utilities was nominated for this award. Um, the first of them was that um, the team um, WW uh, typifies WW strong focus. So putting customers at the heart of everything they do, Wales and West Utilities comfortably top the GDN table for emergency and repair and have done every year since 1415. Sorry, I'm not sure if it's just my end is clear, uh, frozen, or is anyone else 
got the same. Uh, we've got the same, Ben. She seems to have frozen. Right, OK. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was just my system was going. If we could just give uh, Claire a, f a few moments to uh, hopefully uh, hopefully be able to come back in. Just why hopefully Claire Claire's able to join us. If, what I would say is if, um, if people are able to um, uh, if they have any questions from from Claire's uh, presentation when she's uh, finished, uh, hopefully rejoined us and been able to deliver it. Uh, and I can only sympathise, having been there in the past, with being uh, kicked out of, of of various meetings and calls myself on Teams over the over the last fourteen months. Um, but if anybody does have any questions, then please uh, get them into the the chat function, um, and and we can take it from there. Uh, we do we do have a copy of Claire's slides, but unfortunately, we really need Claire to to, to be here to to to, to give uh, to give the presentation. So, if I could just ask everybody to be patient, um, then hopefully, fingers crossed, um, uh, the IT challenges at Claire's end will be uh, will be resolved shortly, and um, and we can get back underway. So let's let's just give her a, a, a quick moment and uh, and see what happens. Thanks very much. Yes, if you've got a question just now, Omar, then please by all means ask the question. So I saw you stick your, your hand up. Sorry, did you mean to do that? Yes. Nope, guess not. Um, Linda, I don't know if you've heard anything from Claire in the background. Right, thanks, Linda. OK, well, we'll give her. I think what we'll do is uh, if it's OK with everybody, we'll give clear until uh, a few minutes. Um, and if we get to quarter two, um, that's three minutes from now. If we get to quarter two and we've not heard any more from Claire, then what I'll do is I've got a, a, a number of um, parish messages that I'd like to share with with everybody who's on the call. So if we give her three minutes and uh, if Claire's been unfortunately unable to, to to reboot her machine and come back, then uh, then I'll, then then I'll look to wrap up um, rather than have everybody sitting in silence. So please please be patient and thank you very much. Actually, just while we're waiting, um, appreciate you don't want to put you on the spot, but Darren and Michael, I don't know if you'd be up for answering, uh, having a bit more of a sort of common common questions. Uh, if if you'd be if you'd be up for filling a few moments. Yeah, I, I, I can do that, Ben. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank no you problem. very much, gents. Uh, well, let's let's take advantage. I'm just intrigued by. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, I'll ask you one question, and we'll give Claire a chance to get to, to get herself sorted in the background. But just, uh, I'm interested in what you feel like. Uh, what's the biggest change you've seen in customer service over the last few years? Um, with you know, across gas gas distribution, gas networks. Do you want me, do you want, shall I go first? Yeah, um, you go first. My sense is a um, couple of things. I mean, I, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll give some credit to Ofgem here. I think Ofgem did the right thing in the Rio deal of um, putting customers much more up there. I'm not sure the industry should have to have help from the regulator, but I think we needed some help um, and, and Ofgem did that for us. So I think that helped put customers up, up at the fore a bit more. But I think more to the point is, you know, just customer expectations, consumer expectations have changed in recent years, obviously, um, you know, social media has influenced that a lot. Um, and I think as 
a gas industry now. Um, I think we get it a lot more that actually, you know, our purpose of being is to get gas flowing safely to our customers. Um, and we need to act much more like a retail business. So that's that's the shift I've seen is more retail business type of thinking, which perhaps wasn't there a few years ago. Absolutely. Michael. Yeah, I was going to um, I was going to agree with Darren on the um, on the first point around the regulator and getting customer firmly on the agenda, but but equally, I'm not quite sure they they went as far as they could have done with the um, the customer satisfaction surveys. I mean, why are we still sending out postal surveys to planned work customers? You know, six to eight weeks after their work, there must be you know better ways, more uh, yeah, quicker ways um, where mm -hmm. customers are going to respond to that because um, yeah. it's, it, it's a process that a certain demographic of customers will respond to rather than all. It should, I think it should be a bit, bit, bit more modern. So it is good in a way that we've moved the emergency and connections processes, but the major placement one was a bit disappointing, I think. Um, you know, but overall, customer on the agenda with with, um, with Ofgem, yeah, I certainly agree. I think um, in emergency response and repair, the way that we, we, we deal with customer, I think, across Cadent, in that it very much feels that it sits with operations, it's operations customer, and they'll respond to that. And your supervisor will be straight out, certainly in our network, to resolve anything that comes in and will absolutely own their customer performance. But I don't think we're quite so mature on some of our other processes. And when I look at um, operate and maintain, for example, because they're more removed from that customer experience, when we do get something in that's relative, you know, governors next door to houses, that kind of thing, trying to get up, um, the, up some of the operate and maintain teams or you know, connections teams and maintain place teams to, to own that customer delivery and to be brand ambassadors we're not quite so mature on that model i think we've got a bit further to go okay mind. thank you very much well i think claire uh, claire hopefully you're you've managed to get your pc rebooted and uh yeah, are, are, you, are you okay to to come back I, in again so sorry about that i don't know what happened i won't put my camera on if you don't mind because no um, I think worries that was at all. what was draining my um, my Bandwidth. internet connection excellent yeah. if you'd like to share your slide back and and uh, and away we'll go thanks claire okay let me know when you can see it Yes, we can see that. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. So I, I was on, I don't yes, know where I got lost. You're I was on, on, was you're on slide, slide two? two. You're on slide two. Yeah. Yeah, does that look familiar? Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Claire. Cheers. Okay, yeah, so I'll say that these are the league tables that we submitted um, as evidence with the award nomination. Um, so, yeah, you know, this shows us as um, the best performing GDN um, for um, emergency and repair um, since 1415, with um, the scores, like I said, ranging from um, 9.44 um, to 9.58 when this was submitted. Now, this is um, from around 6,000 customer satisfaction survey returns. So I think it's fair to say that it's a pretty robust sample. Um, and uh, one of the key initiatives that gave us um, a step change in scores, particularly in the earlier years, was the introduction of our Platinum Service Scheme, which is uh, basically a short survey app on our engineers' phones, uh, which is um, handed over to the customer uh, once the work is completed. Um, and it's for them to do a short survey for us. And this is all about ensuring that our representatives had a conversation with customers once the work was complete. And naturally, they had to have confidence that they'd done a good job in order to ask the customers to rate their service face to face. So we have a completion rate of around 70 percent on these returns and we do about 30,000 jobs. So that's, you know, a pretty good you know, return rate. Um, we monitor and target the volumes um, rather than the scores because these are invariably high. Um, but each you know, um, return represents a conversation with a customer. And we know from years of analysis that communication is the biggest driver for overall customer satisfaction. And we saw results almost immediately, um, and these have been sustained over the years. Um, we also quoted um, at, at the time when this was submitted that we were um, reaching 93% um, of um, res resolving our emergency and repair complaints in 1920 um, within one working day following receipt. Um, only 17 complaints were, weren't resolved within this timescale, and, and all but three of those um, were customer driven and therefore outside our control. Um, and when we say resolve, we obviously mean, you know, no further outstanding action or remedial work is completed and any payment agreed with the customer has either gone, has left the building in terms of um, gone out in the post if it's a cheque payment or if it's a transfer that it's left our accounts. So it includes payments as well. So complaints, volumes and speed of resolution, you know, are key drivers for customer satisfaction, as we've as we've seen already, and they really help us to achieve this um, level of sustained performance. So let's go down to the next slide and the next reason. So the next reason 
was respect for customers' homes. So whilst customers are naturally satisfied with emergency response, you know, WW are not resting on their laurels. New and innovative ways to improve the customer experience, including shoe guards, handheld hoovers, dust sheets, you know, reassuring customers that engineers will treat their home the way uh, as if it's their own. So, I mean, you know, this picture was when we first launched the, the campaign and we had the blue over shoes. Um, I think, you know, times have moved on a little now and we use um, more sort of material like wetsuits, um, but these are black. So maybe not so obvious to customers, but they, they are always worn. Um, I could mention dust sheets in the handheld hoovers, you know, that show respect for, for customers in, in, in that area. And then, um, and I've already mentioned that, you know, one of our business priorities is to take pride. But, you know, customer is so important to us. You know, it features in both our priorities and values. So driving outstanding service by putting the customer first. And our chief executive is one of the biggest advocates of this. Um, and he himself is a vice president for the Institute of Customer Service um, with his role in helping, you know, other companies improve their performance in this really important area. Um, and again, there's a strong focus on communication here, driven by Graham Edwards and his team of directors. Um, and, and for the emergency service specifically, you know, a real focus on reassurance, which is key, you know, with the public nervousness around gas. Um, and also, we, all, we often find, and I'm sure everybody does, that there is understandably a lot of confusion about who is responsible for what in the gas industry. Um, so easy to understand visuals, you know, on, on communications cards help us to explain to customers, you know, what we're doing and who maybe they need to contact, you know, for any follow up work. So the next reason. Um, so response rates are one hour for uncontrolled leaks and two hours for controlled leaks. You know, figures that WWU routinely improve on, so much so that in GD2, WWU has committed that on average it will get to all gas leaks within one hour any time of night or day. So, you know, the average for controlled is 35 minutes. The, uh, sorry, the uncontrolled is 35 minutes, the average for controlled is 50 minutes, and the average interruption time is 355 minutes. So, um, you know, there is, we, you know, we're clearly, you know, hitting these standards um, quite comfortably, um, but what having this extra voluntary target to our license condition response times does is ensure that we get to every customer as soon as possible. So, for example, if we were unable to get uh, to a customer within the hour and therefore fail that standard, then we will endeavour to get there as soon as possible to keep the average down rather than saying, well, we've missed that one. So we'll go to the next job and keep that one in standard. So just make sure that everybody gets a response as soon as possible. And then moving on to slide five. Um, so. Um, the fourth reason was the high performance um, is underpinned by new and innovative training methods. You know, arts-based training helps engineers understand how to communicate with those most in need. So every year, I say every year, with the exception of this year and last year because of COVID, we hold uh, an annual customer conference um, for our employees um, and we work closely with our arts and business partners to deliver training. Um, these sort of live theatre experiences performed by actors with learning difficulties have seen really highly effective and memorable results. Um, and in the last conference, you know, we had scenes of learning for, for interacting with customers who are not obviously vulnerable, who are perhaps hard to understand, upset customers, and, you know, those who also have transient vulnerabilities. Um, Obviously, you can't have all colleagues there at a, at a conference, otherwise no, no work will be getting done. So for those colleagues that weren't able to attend, you know, a set of training videos were made available at the same time, um, you know, to share the, the wider skills development. Um, we, you know, we have great partnerships with the arts and we also use arts based training in our corporate inductions. So that's all new starters from senior managers up to senior managers for both internal and external customers. And we've done this for over eight years because the results have been so um, positive. Um, those sessions generally concentrate on making a positive first impression and building rapport and relationships that really influence positively on the customer experience. Um, we also fit locking cooker valves. Um, I'm sure most of you know what they are, but for anybody who doesn't, these are um, suitable for customers who can no longer operate their cooker safely, such as people living with Alzheimer's or dement dementia. Um, 
when a valve is installed, the cooker can be used under supervision and locked in the off position when the key holder leaves the room or the house. Um, this way, the priority customer can remain in their home whilst their family member or carer has the peace of mind that they won't come to any harm when they are actually alone. And then finally, you know, we provide um, you know, the alternative heating and cooking, hot water facilities and hot meals to, to these priority customers and you know, most other customers who are affected by you know, prolonged gas uh, interruptions to their gas supplies. Um, so those were the four reasons that we were nominated for this award. So I just go over to any questions. Thank you very much, Claire, and uh, good recovery. I've been there myself in the past when, uh, <laughs> when IT, uh, IT kicks us kicks us when we're down, which is a, a, so excellent. And thank you very much for that. I particularly like the the uh, treating treating the uh, customers home as if it was your own. I think I will need to send my own children down to learn some <laughs> of those uh, going forward. But we've got a couple of questions in. Um, so uh, good, uh, Omar is, uh, uh, is highlighted. He's from Egypt and just wanted a little bit uh, understand a little bit more about the who the third party is or the entity in the UK that 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 uh, gathers, you know, asks us to gather all the feedback for these uh, scores and ratings. So a, a nice, easy question for you there, there, Claire. OK, so it's the, the, the market research company, sorry, sorry, is that what Sorry, no, I think, I think uh, Omar was referring to Ofgem, to be fair, so. So what was the question? It was, uh, you know, the, the, the score, the scoring and the customer satisfaction score, uh, customer yes. satisfaction rates. Sorry, apologise. It could have been about the third party. Um, how, you know, which companies do you deal with in terms of gathering that information? But I was also thinking about the fact that we have to collect it, you know. Yeah, for often, the, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, OK, so yeah, it is a licence condition. Uh, you know, we are required to um, survey our customers for our three in the th main, main services, which is replacement, connections and emergency and repair. So we have an independent market research company that conducts these on our behalf um, with the guidelines from our regulator Ofgem and um, we all have I say we all all the gas distribution networks have the same um, market research company so it's done in a, on a consistent basis um, we have minimum levels of returns that we have to achieve so we get a robust sample and then we get the scores um, when we get the scores we have to report them on an annual basis to our regulator Ofgem. Excellent. We've got a, a good question from Mark. He's, he's asked, do you find that customer's age uh, has a has a big impact on how they uh, handle calling in and getting the issue resolved or, or understanding of the issues that, that need to be dealt with? Um, in terms of their understanding, did you say? Yes, in terms of you know, how, you know, just whether age is an issue in terms of the uh, how, how they approach and, and how much they understand. Um, about our services or about filling out the surveys? Uh, I think he said, he said issues, so I assume it, okay. I assume it's about the, uh, the, the the items that made them call in in the first place. Yeah, OK. So, um, yeah, so we, one of the things I mentioned was um, the um, nervousness around gas. Um, so we do tend to find that, you know, the older generation, you know, understandably have, a, you know, a, a nervousness around gas. So very much concentrating um, our focus on reassurance and communication and um, extra support. So, you know, we have, all, you know, various extra support measures um, that we can um, help customers with. Um, but yeah, you know, we're very, very in tune and we know where their, you know, their priority registered customers are and we, um, sign up as many as we can to the priority service register. You know, the Platinum Service app that I mentioned, there's also a, uh, a page on there where we can um, uh, identify and, and sign up, sorry, um, priority service customers who are eligible to go on that register. Um, and then we can explain to them, obviously, the benefits of that. And where we and, and when we visit customers' properties, you know, we are alerted to where those priority customers are. So we can, you know, prepare, prepare in advance for those visits. So for example, you know, if a customer is hard of hearing, then we're aware of that. When we attend maybe a gas leak, then we can make sure that we, you know, we knock loudly. You know, we, we you know, we we we, we wait longer, um, and we can, um, you know, offer extra support in in that respect. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Claire, and thank you for the presentation and and for the questions. I'm conscious of time, so um, I'll, I'll I'll let you I'll let you go now. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, just to round up, I'd like to thank uh, everyone today, um, and, and particularly our speakers, Dad and Michael and Claire, for their engaging, insightful presentations. As we as the UK enters GD2, and with major energy transition challenges looming on the horizon, it's more important than ever that we uh, that we deliver outstanding customer service as an 
industry. It was therefore great to hear about the positive stories and see also the common focus, the themes and the messages coming through from all of our presenters today. Final thanks must go to iGEM and the EUA teams for the promotion and delivery of today's webinar. And thank you lastly, but not least to all of you for joining us. Um, the Gas Industry Awards live virtual ceremony will be held next week on the 18th of May. It will be compared by television presenter Dallas Campbell and this year's guest speaker is Jonathan Brearley, the CEO of Ofgem. To find out more and to book your place, please visit gasindustryawards.com. And last but not least, thank you again. Stay safe and we'd hope to see you all there next week. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.